there we go. Um, so does anybody have a question for the group? Um, I also, you know, like as a prompt, um, uh, just was curious, I think last week, was it last week? I asked about um, like what you're grateful for, if there was anything like that. So this week I was wondering, um, and I totally got this from somebody else, so <laughs> it's not for me. Um, but like, did you have any aha mo moment, mo moments this week? Like an aha, like it was just like, huh, that was interesting. Or I learned this, or I observed this, or I'm gonna do that more. Any aha moments this week for anyone? can jump in on the, I will do this more. <laughs> uh, last week I shared um, that I had been called to one of the schools that I support because a prenatal mom was really, really, really beside herself. She had requested that I meet with her and the uh, prenatal, well, the dad, um, and that I help. That her, her goal was that um, she be heard, right? Because because sometimes it, it feels a little one way, but my, I will do this more. Um, I thought about how am I going to find a balance and make it fun? And I want them to come back and I want them to do some hard work. And I want them to think about the transition to parenting that we are all working on all the time. So I just came from there and I'm smiling about what I will do more um, because I, we watched a video about uh, just a one minute video, dad and baby doing push-ups. I asked what, it, what's the baby learning? And I said, they, they, they named the obvious push-ups and coordination. And we got to the underlying, you know, trust and bonding and significance and importance and belonging and all of that. And I said, so here's the deal. We're going to play connect four and for every piece you drop, you need to um, first share, and I had them think about two things, the times that they've had together that have, they've loved, and what would they love to continue, and the times that have been hard for them, um, what would they wish to change, what would make them feel significant or belonging. So for every piece that they dropped into the Connect Four, they needed to make a statement. They played two games, and I said, it's not about what you say as much as it is about the other person hearing what you say. You have to be candid and say what you want them to hear. Um, and we had a lot of laughs over the game. And this dad shared so many things about what he, he, he thought about what has not been easy and what he needed to still feel important, significance and belonging. And she did too. So I think they both heard each other. And I told them that I'll follow up by um, typing up there what they both shared so they can use it as a reference. Um, but I think what I would do more is continue with the, um, the games, right? Because they just were, it was very lighthearted and they did a lot of work today. So like I wanted to be there and play the game. <laughs> I can that's just... exactly how I'm feeling too. I feel the same way. I that's why I put in the chat. Nikki, can you be my educator? Can I play games with you? I love that. That's wonderful. <laughs> mm. And what a great use of the video. You know, one of those things that sort of float through our social media a lot, right? And it's um, it's just like, oh, what a good dad, you know, or whatever. And it's seen and forgotten. But to kind of hold on to that as a teaching resource. And also, you know, I just think it's short. So it's not like, oh, we have to sit here for 15 minutes, right? It's just like, because you get the point, right? And it's, it is a piece of media to use for reflection and to just ask that first question and then you can go from there. So, and you're using, are these younger parents? Um, this is a ninth and a 10th grader. Oh this my gosh. This, this is across the street at our high school. Yeah, so yeah. So, I mean, it's, I also think about using 
media content that they're likely to see. It's not like pulling out, you know, <laughs> reefer madness or something like that. <laughs> I mean, this is like if something they might see on TikTok or something that, you know, and so I also applaud you for pulling out a piece of media that is accessible and familiar, you know, to the people that you're working with. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other aha moments this week? Um, my own uh, personal one is bounding my time. <laughs> um, uh, it's so easy to just do, 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 right? And because we're so incredibly competent, you know, it's just like, does everything get done? Everything gets done, right? But there's sort of that overwhelming feeling of, but did I get done as much of this as I wanted to. And usually, you know, what comes at a cost is like self-care, right? And so, um, and it's really hard, especially for me now with like my time isn't bounded by um, going to campus or whatever. And so I almost have to do it intentionally, but my own aha when I've done that is like, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna write for this amount of time. And then because the weather is really nice, then I'm gonna go out and intentionally take a walk and it's going to be around this time and um, and then I'll come back and then I'll do whatever right and so it's a little bit of self-discipline but um, um, just my own aha is how really constructive um, doing that is so it's not good intentions it's planned time so that's my aha and that's what I will continue to do more of My aha moment this week um, happened on Wednesday morning when, um, so we're short staffed and we have a sub for our Monday and Wednesday morning class. And of our eight classes we've had so far, because we're in week four, um, she's come to four classes. So half of the time we've had to juggle some kind of something else. And um, on, on Wednesday, we had a different sub come in and this is a class where the kids haven't had anything consistent, aren't used to separating, are really having a very, very challenging time. It's birth to time. So we've got babies and preschoolers and toddlers, the whole mix, and it's a full class. So there's a whole lot going on on Wednesday mornings in this class. And as, as I've shared the last week or so too, it's been a super stressful time for me. So I feel inside like a fluttering mess, <laughs> right? Like, because I never know what's going to happen, if there's going to be a teacher there or not, if I'm going to have to adjust my lesson plan, if we're going to be able to separate, if we're only going to separate for a few minutes. If, like, I never know. And I'm someone who really likes knowing. Um, and I never know what my class is going to be like. And, um, and so I feel like I'm a stressed out mess. That's how I'm feeling inside. And I think my aha moment is realizing that's not what I present to others at all. And that was actually kind of reassuring because the sub <laughs> was struggling. And, and, and after 15 minutes of separation time, knowing we already had made it truncated, um, she called the parent room and she's just like, they're all losing it. Can y'all can y'all come back? Because it's not like one or two kids, neither parent, it's the whole class. And I was like, yep, we're on our way. And I briefed the parents just briefly on their walk down the hallway. It's like, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna give your kid a hug. You are gonna sit on the rug with your second. We're gonna attempt continuing this conversation. And you're not gonna go play with your child, but you're gonna let them sit with you if that's what they need. And they're gonna get used to, they can be in a space with their parent without playing with them. And that will be a step towards learning separation. And so we had this little mini lesson on separation as we walked down the hall. And afterwards, and it, and it was chaotic and it was noisy and it was okay. Um, was it ideal? Absolutely not. Did it work? Kind of. Were we working really hard to meet parent and child needs? We really were. 
And the sub afterwards was just like, I can't believe you stayed calm through all that. And like, you were so flexible. And, and I was like, well, I didn't really have a choice. But, but it was really reassuring to know that no matter how like, oh, this isn't working right, is going on inside, I can still be a voice of calm and reason and compassion and flexibility in the moment. And I can still model that to parents, which is like, isn't that what we need as parents all the time? You never know what's gonna happen, right? You have to have that, okay, they plan shift. We're gonna do this a little differently now. So that was just really reassuring. And I realized I, I need to be conscious of um, encouraging that in, in the parents too. Like how, how you present, it's not always the chaos that you feel inside and that we can build on that. So that was kind of my moment. I really am hoping we hire a, a, a real person for <laughs> consistency though. So don't get me wrong. Um, sometimes, uh, don't you think that like I'm just reflecting on what you're talking about, Becca, and um, and then also the um, uh, Kelly's, you know, it's like that whole keeping calm thing. That's tough. That is really tough. Um, when Kelly was talking, I was thinking, you know, about you know, like giving this and like your reaction. Um, when you said the thing to the parent about still and the parent kind of reacted was that when we're calm, it's almost easier to also take that response. I mean, and, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, like I can go into a class and I can feel I'm really good at this. I'm really like building community, you know, whatever. And but that in that state of calm, it's almost like being prepared for anything. Right. Because you you don't know how people are going to read like you can be like a super warm and fuzzy person and that's like kelly's intention by saying oh are you still living there right and then they respond with what you know and then if you're not ready for that if you're not calm then you can kind of fuel the fire by your response which is oh i didn't mean that right and then whatever but it went, the more that we're calm anyway i'm just thinking about being calm and how hard that can be right when we're managing so like, you know, I'm back in your situation, like walking into the, like being able to guide those parents on what they're going to expect when they walk in that room. But yeah, like big time kudos to you for finding that Zen part of you that could lead those parents. The aha part is the not feeling it inside at all <laughs> but apparently like I can provide that call. So I was like, okay, yay. I have a skill I didn't know yet. And I think how much parents and families need calm. <clears throat> I had kind of different. I wasn't feeling chaotic inside, although I certainly have those days. But I have a family playtime on Thursday nights and dad of a little, it's a birth of five. We don't separate or anything though. It's just a playtime. And I don't, I'm a parent ad. I do not have early childhood. But last year I started doing some of these non-separating and I have five of them this year. It's not my jam, but I'm doing it anyway. Circle time is not my jam. I'm doing it anyway. So I sort of feel like I'm boring compared to a lot of the early childhood teachers who play guitar and, you know, do these amazing circle times, these fantastic songs. And, you know, it's, it's itsy bitsy spider and, you know, the basics for me. But a dad shared last night on their way to class that his daughter's about three said, Miss Carissa is calm. And that was a big deal for her because they had been to other story times or music classes where the teachers are much more boisterous, which has its place for sure. But that my boring or calm is also a good thing for some kids. And maybe I am boring for some kids. I don't know, that's okay. I, I guess, kind of like you said Becca I'm I'm more okay with that now it's like validating my, I have a different style and I'm just gonna do my style because I just can't muster all of that anyway like I said it's not my jam so I just got to do me and yeah 
but calm is good and families are often looking for it. And kiddos. And I think families are also, also often missing that and, and having the model of what, what does it look like to interact with your child, even in an entertaining way, that still calm is fantastic for families that are surrounded by overstimulation. Years ago, I was, um, you know, like you're in a classroom and then the new teacher, the teacher for the next thing comes in and I'm cleaning up my stuff. And, um, and the, I had done a thing with this undergraduates about brain development. <laughs> so we were like tossing pieces, different colors of yarn so I could show them like neural pathways and stuff. And um, anyway, so we're, we're cleaning that up and this teacher came in like when he was coming in to set up and he said something like, um, geez, of all the things that we have to do, you wouldn't think we'd have to be entertainers too, you know? And I thought, really? <laughs> and I mean, I was glad, I was glad that he said it because for those of us with a little bit more of a performative style you know it's just like is that what this is and then to really kind of bring you back to and chris i'm reflecting on what you were just saying too it's about the learning right and what i've realized too about calm and reflection is that sometimes that's that is what people need and want because they are so overstimulated and there's also and I picked this up for from some research with ECFE parents a while back is that consistency. And again, I think that this was the secret of COVID and ECFE was that when your life is really stressful, yeah, maybe Jim Gaffigan's video on families can be something funny to laugh at, but really what you need is that sense that if I need to a break, I just know I can go on Netflix and something's going to be there, right? If I need this break, ECFE is going to be there. Like it's a consistency. It's a consistency that gives people that sense of trust. And so um, we're not all things to all people. And that's why I said you do you, because I think it's the best that we can do is to simply be authentic to who we are and, you know, and to focus on the learning piece of it, you know, and be attuned sort of read the room and be attuned to your learners and what they need so that it's not about you, right? It's not about me performing or something like that. It's about what does this group need? And <clears throat> to echo that focus on calm, um, I think that that would probably go number one, that calm voice, that consistent, that voice of safety. Yeah. Last week, not this week, but last week, um, we had a circle time where the kids were coming and pulling apples off the felt board. And it was very interactive and very exciting and very crazy. Um, and then we were separating and a couple of the kids just like, Wah! you know, so the parents were just coming out and they all came into the parent room and they were like, they literally, they sat down and they went, oh. you know, like three or four of them. And I was like, okay, let's just all do that. Let's just all breathe. And we, and they all did it. And I thought they were going to be, I thought I'd be the only one doing it, but I was like, shut up for the cat who needs fed. And, um, I did not say shut up, <laughs> but literally they, they did it with me. And then I did two deep breaths and then they, a couple of them did a third. And one mom was like, that was no problem for me. And that breathing felt good for me, you know? So, um, you know, and I was like, ah, welcome to the Zen space. And then when it came time to be done, I have a chime go off on my iPad just so that we end on time. Otherwise we don't end on time. And it chimed and I, and I was like, sorry guys, you have to go get your kids now. And they're like, oh man, but it just, it felt good. It felt good that they came in they were sort of bedraggled. They took deep breaths. We had a great discussion. They laughed about needing to leave the space. So I was like, yeah, 
That's a good space. Just, it felt good, you know? I'm going to go feed my cat now. Excuse me. That was quick. <laughs> well, her food, like her bowl was up on the, on the counter to keep the dog from eating it. So all I had to do was put it down. This week on Tuesday evening, uh, or Tuesday evenings, I have a, a um, an 11 to 15 month group. And so I can relate, Carissa, to the, to the non-separating and you are all of the pieces because I do the circle time and um, we have educational assistants, but not in other, we don't have a children's teacher with that group. Anyways, um, when I got to developmental highlights, I, you know, just check-ins, milestones, celebrations, challenges, updates from the week, I asked them to use a word and I had a list of words for them just to share where they were at and how they were feeling. And it was interesting because I could have sensed the words that they were going to choose that week, that particular evening, because it just seemed like they were tired. And the words that I had listed, it was a coincidence. I didn't do it after they came in, but I had exhausted and I had energetic and I had slow silly. I don't know. I, I had a bunch of things up there and I said, but you certainly you could choose your own. And then I said, go ahead and choose a word. And then, um, you can share your, your highlight or your update. And, um, I think maybe six out of eight or something like that chose exhausted. And it just, I think allowing others to hear it and to have it be in the group and in the space and honored, I felt like they left um, I, I don't know, it, it seemed like they were feeling more energized than how I felt when they came in, um, because they were productive and they shared and they worked and um, they had a good conversation. But I, I was just thinking about that whole, um, it, just the feelings around all of this and the, the hearing what they have going on. I think nighttime parents to evening class parents, there's just a little different vibe too. Not that daytime parents aren't exhausted and busy and all that too, but those evening parents have a little bit different vibe often. Yeah, it brought them back to calm. Like, it, it, I think it added a little bit of zen and not that they weren't calm, they were. Um, but I just think it, it felt a little bit better after they all stated where they were at. And one, he wasn't going to use the word exhausted. He said, I'm really tired. <laughs> that's a good, um, that's a good point. I don't think we've talked about that, but what are your observations about parents? Um, maybe energies or contributions or interest or whatever in the evening versus the daytimes? This is the first nighttime class I've taught in ages. And the one I did years ago was um, more specifically a preschool. And this is the, so we had a separation time and stuff. Um, and this is just a play time. They are more focused on their kiddos, I think. Like daytime parents often want to interact with each other a lot more and day to evening, you know, their kids have, probably been in daycare all day and this this is our time with them and they're really going to take advantage of that in the classroom which is lovely and the way daytime parents they're doing what they need to do and that's lovely as well but it's just a different sort of a different vibe I guess best way to say it <clears throat> I agree with that and that was actually the thing that I picked up on early on as they were entering the room that night on Tuesday was that many of them took a seat and they didn't follow their kids. Um, it just was a different, little bit different vibe. And I was like, huh, okay, we're talking to each other, but from their seats. And, and it was really me and the EAs that were following the kids around the room, which <laughs> if it was long-term, I would maybe say something about that or, or share my observation or get into their feelings um, about that. But I, I it wasn't necessary. Like you could see it and it was a coincidence that those words were in there that day. 
my night classes, um, they sometimes they're just a hot mess. Um, the kids are a mess. The parents are tired. Um, the, we can't get deep into anything because they're, they're still, they're just flying by the seat of their pants all the time. You know, um, their problems seem to be their concerns and struggles and problems seem to be bigger because they haven't had any way. They just don't, I don't know. It's just in the past, they don't seem to connect with other parents at all. And so they just don't have information. And um, so these groups, I find that my evening groups um, really need each other because they just don't have time to socialize with other parents when they're working full time. Um, and so sometimes like, you know, their information on sleep is, you know, they're getting advice from grandma, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's really been interesting last night, for instance, um, I had a mom ask, when do you know it's time to pull your kid out of daycare? And we had a very long, the 15 minute discussion about, um, very long discussion about like, what, what are the red flags? How do you know when it doesn't feel good? What, and childcare right now is a mess. Uh, it's really hard to find childcare. So, um, you know, it was, it's interesting, but it, this is, I, I have not had a big nighttime group for some time and I have a great nighttime group and they are never sick. They're always, always there. And at, when they're done, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired. Cause that's my third class of the day too. So, um, but yeah, it just, it, I feel like those evening classes are really important for them. So I'm back. Uh, um, I'm thinking of you and I see Jenny coming in. So would is that just, is the sort of observation about, I mean, cause even as, as an undergraduate, like I would see differences in students in the morning versus the afternoon and the ones that have had classes all day and are just like little zombies. Um, is, is sort of seeing, understanding sort of differences in parents, is that, is that useful for a new parent educator to know about in ways that sort of would inform your teaching or is that just one of those things that you observe as a teacher and you just kind of adapt to? I think it's helpful to know as long as you're not boxing parents in before yeah. you've had a chance to do your own observations. Yeah. Um, because different groups are gonna be different. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that whole, there are measurable differences between boys and girls, but there's more differences between boys and between girls than there are between boys and girls. It's the same thing. Like there's gonna be differences between morning and evening classes, but there's gonna be more differences in between. So it's not necessarily all going to apply to you. So if you knew it was with a huge grain of salt, um, understanding that different groups um, might be coming to class with different needs is very helpful because then, you're better able to meet them where they're at, I think. I, I find that the needs of um, parents at night and during the day are are different and the same. I don't know. It's hard. like I, I react to what Ellen was saying with the evening parents feeling like they really need each other more um, for information and connecting about their kids. I, I find daytime parents, especially if they're stay-at-home parents, are so desperate for human adult interaction that it doesn't have to be about the kids. <laughs> like, but they also really, really need that. Okay, if, especially that time, the parent separation time of like that that zen of a deep breath, right? And and that like a little bit of space for my child. For parents who are with their kids twenty four seven. Like that is much more their need. The parents who are saying goodbye to their kids every day, um, even though they may be exhausted because it's the end of the day, I feel like um, need that connection with their child more. Um, but they also want to make sure they're not dropping the ball in any way or that they're that they're learning what they need to learn to parent 
And they're also dealing with kids who are going through way more transitions, which is what I wrote in the um, chat about um, sometimes the evening feels more chaotic because it's a weird mix of kids who are used to separating, most of them, not all of them, but um, so they have some experience with that, but also they've been away from their parents all day and now you're going to say goodbye again, like, and especially for the toddler age kids that feeling really stressful. So there's just a weird kind of mix, but knowing that, hey, in the evening, you're probably going to be dealing with more transition issues um, for the kids. And during the day, you may be dealing with more, um, I need a break from a child issues <laughs> um, for the parents. Like knowing that going into it is probably helpful. Welcome, Jenny. Um, we've been talking about... Uh, lots of things. Um, um, I had asked earlier about um, any aha moments this week. Um, um, your new teacher-ish in a new gig. Um, any any uh, new learnings this week that you'll continue in your practice? Not to put you on the spot. If you don't, Mitch, you can bet. Um, Friday after um, the week, it's hard to think of that. <laughs> but I was I was talking to someone last weekend about my work. And um, one of the things I said was, they said, how's it going? I said, great. And I feel like families are so hungry for connection right now and hungry for learning and community. And I don't know if this is just like ECFE every year, but it just feels like um, the parents are just because they've had two couple years of not learning in community in the same way, that they just seem so open and receptive um, and wanting to just soak it all in and suck it, you know. So, and I, I don't know if it's a difference in, in the community I'm in now versus last year, but just feeling really grateful for that. Like they're showing up really wanting to be here. And even the first week where, um, you know, you're never quite sure how they feel about separation and how that's going to go. And um, they're like, yes, we, we want it. We want to do it. Even if it's hard on my child, you know, I'll go back whatever early, but anyway, feeling grateful for that. Thanks. Becca, you said, yes. Are you observing that too? <laughs> You're having a bite to eat. I'm not needing you to see me eat. Yeah, I, I'm definitely observing, you know, it's interesting, my very first year teaching, I had one class that um, I had maybe one or two people who were willing to participate at all in it, and the rest of them were just lumps on logs, and it was painful, like, they were there for the, for their kids, and they were not interested in the parenting time at all, and it continued that way all year, like, I tried, and it was, oh, it was painful. So when we were talking about group values and guidelines at the beginning of this year with all my classes, it was so different because almost every, no, every single class in some way said participation. Like, this is what's important for a good group. This is what will help me make meaning out of this group if everybody's really participating. And they're so on board to like, this is important time. <laughs> like, I, I feel like the value toward that parenting time is much more appreciated now than it was in 2019. Anyone else on that? Ooh. Susan, you asked, you, you initiated that last question by um, kind of phrasing like the needs piece with, you, you know, the evening versus the day. And would it be helpful for new parent and family educators to, um, you know, kind of know some of this? And it, what I, where my mind was as I was listening to everyone, Becca was talking so eloquently about needs, right? The parents, just all of these different needs that they have. Um, and I will say that, I, and the other couple comments too after that were really about how do we meet their needs and, and observe and understand where they're coming from because each group is so different. And I have been advocating and um, our new um, 
parent education core curriculum framework that will like the 2023 book, um, I have been advocating for a section on needs. How is it that we assess needs? Um, and using even some of the, the um, research that talks about felt ascribed and future needs, uh, because, and I always share this, but you could have someone's fantastic, amazing lesson plans, right? But until you know the needs of that group, that lesson plan is not going to do a whole lot because it's still about um, connecting in the way that the group needs to be connected with in a given place and time. Um, and so those lesson plans are fantastic to have as a jumping off place, but um, you're ultimately going to take that and make it what it needs to be for that group, right? And so I just, I really appreciate hearing all of these comments because I think it validates to what, what we need to emphasize or a thing that was not in the last parent education core curriculum framework in that way. Um, of course, there was a section on assessing needs, but that research wasn't a part of that. It was more about looking at perhaps a community needs assessment or some of these other things about assessing needs. Um, but I think it's where the rubber hits the road, what you're all talking about. Like when you sense that that group is, um, Becca, you said like the daytime, maybe they're like, I need some time away from my kids or that sort of thing. Um, how we honor where they're at and bring that to new PEs through the parent ed curriculum, through the framework. Yeah, you, you, like Nikki uh, reminded me, so one of the parents in my group, um, she is actually from other state. She's from, uh, she just recently moved from Denver to uh, Georgia. And she said she just need to be with other parents in the group because, you know, she is in a new place. She is alone and uh, she doesn't have connections with other local parents. She just needs this, you know, be with. I mean, like, uh, yeah, so uh, I, 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 that was kind of, you know, like, a, you know, I, I cannot ca categorize that as a aha moment, but it really helped me to realize parents needs. Each one has different needs. And uh, I really think, you know, uh, what Nikki said, like how to, uh, how to uh, accurately ac assess the needs of the group is so important. You guys all know about my dad. Um, he's back this year and he just attended class for the first time this week. And um, mom came the first two weeks. <clears throat> and uh, it was interesting because last year he was in a group with some first time parents, um, you know, parents who hadn't really been in a group setting, maybe parents who um, might take what he says and think it's like, so I've always felt I was on the defense in that group with him because he would say things like spank him back or, you know, bite him back. And I was like, Wah. you know, so, but now he's not, he, he'd last year, he did a multi era, a preschool group and a toddler group. His preschooler is now in preschool. He's just coming with the toddler now preschool or whatever. So I only have one day, right. I have to work with him. Um, but last year, I felt like I had to always have something in my back pocket to not tell him he was wrong. But you know what I mean? And this year, everybody in the group is on kid like two or three. Half of the group has been with him already. They already have his number. So it's just already the group that he's in is different. And if he says something completely off the wall, I don't feel like I have to be like, yeah, it's not really recommended that you bite your child back if they bite you. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't feel like I'm like, okay, what's he going to say? You know, so just the, even one parent in a different group changes the needs of what the rest of the group needs, you know? And I was like, oh God, that was so much work last year. I'm so glad I don't have to do that this year. <laughs> It's a testimony to your hard work. They're kind of, he's coming back this week. I think he, he, he come coming back. That's huge. He's coming back. Yeah. So, and this week he 
I don't know, guys, maybe this is, oh, we got to go. Parents who think that their children cleaning up their poop accidents is an appropriate response. Uh, like, I was like, oh, because he was like, yeah, we made her clean it up. And I was like, well, I said, that is an option. I said, but some kids are really freaked out by their poop accidents. And that may feel more of like a punishment than a consequence. He's like, it's not a punishment. And I was like, oh, we are not getting into a fight about this right now. You know what I mean? So like I was on the, you know, yeah. So I don't know. How do you respond to those parents who are like, clean up your poop? I'm like, no, no, they're too little. They shouldn't be playing with poop. <laughs> it's like are you there's never an appropriate time to be playing with poop. Just yeah. gonna throw that out there. <laughs> so true. Um, it's like a general, and I think your whole experience with this, Dad Ellen, is like the uh, an operational lesson. Is you know like that calm, but pedagogical response when uh, people respond with outrageous um, risk behaviors, right? I mean, that are sort of the antithesis of what you're going try you're trying to get them toward, and but they they it's like this is their practice right just spank them or you know let her cry it out or you know what it buck up and i mean all of those tropes right and so you don't want to react in a you know strong way you want you want what you've achieved you want the parent to continue to come back right and so um, I think this is a really uh, key thing, and certainly everybody here has experience with this stuff. So if it's okay, we could talk about that next week if people are going to be here. Yeah, like canned responses to stuff where you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe he or she just said that. You know, because if you're in a group with a bunch of brand new parents, first time parents, and another parent is like, I spank and you don't have time to be like studies show <laughs> oh. in some ways it's the similar to having wanting to have some words ready if some a parent says something racist or sexist or yes anti yes yes yay yep my go-to is I'm uncomfortable with that <laughs> yes that's perfect which gives you time to think of a better response yep I also just, I, I know I share this story probably every year and I recognize the fact that it's one o'clock so I'll try not to take too long. But um, if we have too much of a pat answer in reserve that can sometimes shut down the potential for an amazing conversation. It's true. Um, so, so if you have that to give yourself some space and time but also have an open mind to potentially um, exploring where they're coming from a little bit further. Um, one of my favorite conversations that I had as a parent in ECFE was when a mom was so brave and shared that in her culture, and it was very much a cultural difference, from birth to five, you spank your child, and after five, you don't. Like, and, and she was really specific about it. She's Vietnamese, she grew up in Vietnam, and she was just like, it was such a culture shock to her that she's like, I know it's a bad thing to do in the United States, but where I was raised and how I was raised is that's how you show a child you care. You give them these really firm boundaries because they need to learn and be safe, right? Like, and so for her, spanking was such a hugely important way of showing your child you love them. Like, and it's so not in our culture, right? And, and so it's like, okay, our parent educator didn't shut her down right away um, with, it's not good to think, blanket statement, right? Because she was being really vulnerable sharing that. It wasn't said in an aggressive way to get a reaction, <laughs> like maybe the dad in Helen's class might say something with a different reason behind saying it. Um, Anyhow, it ended up being a really neat discussion on cultural differences and how do we show love to our children and how do we do that when the culture is different than what we grew, grew up in? Um, how do we adjust? I don't, it was just a really neat conversation. And, and she wasn't, I, I didn't, I don't think she went away feeling bad 
or feeling like, yeah, you should keep spanking your child. Like it, it was more gray and more productive than that. So that's just my little two cents on there's, there's oh, for sure. Yeah, no, there's okay. definitely opportunity to continue to, you know, like I wouldn't shut it down. It like, you know, we would have a, a conversation about it. Um, but you know, there are some moments and that maybe wasn't a good, that maybe wasn't a good example, but you know what I mean? Like well, and Ellie, with, with your dad problem. in question, that's going to happen every single week. So that's not really what you need to be spending your time. on. <laughs> yeah. And it's getting to the, again, the underlying thing of, you know, the parent and what is the parent's intention of sharing this? Mm -hmm. Right. And then, especially back as you're talking about, you know, talking about it within the culture and, you know, this is where I think we can get a little bit too white in our lens of parenting without understanding sort of those, those contextual differences with culture and then looking at the generations and generations and generations of people. I mean, it's not a view. I mean, it's right. And so why do we even care about, you know, what is the teaching thing and, and what is our concern in terms of abuse and power and, you know, and all of that. So um, for next week, ringers and cultural connections. Love it. Love it. I think I'll post on Facebook, like what we're going to be talking about. So maybe um, more people will join us. So um, not the not 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 more. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like Kelly. What? We need more? No, just kidding. So next week, I'm going to mix the next two weeks because we have um, staff development all day next Friday and then MEA, my family is going out of town. So okay. we'll see you on the 28th. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Bye everybody. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Enjoy the fall. <laughs>